Next, uh, my pleasure uh, to introduce Carlos Cerezo. Um, Carlos is a research scientist with MIT's Sustainable Design Lab. So Carlos, welcome. Thank you. In the meanwhile, well, thank you very much, everybody, <laughs> for being here. Um, and thank you for the introduction. I'm going to be talking about some of the work that we've been doing in the, there we go, in the Sustainable Design Lab regarding the modeling of building energy demands at an urban scale and why we think this is relevant for people doing policy regarding climate change. And we've been working on this topic for a few years now in a context in which more and more cities, obviously in the Northeast of the United States and Canada, but also around the world, have started setting these long-term emission reduction goals that are highly focused on the strategies that have to do with energy consumption in buildings. And just as a sample, there are some of them here for 2030, for Boston, New York, Quebec, just to show how these are typically more ambitious and certainly more committed than those of the government, national and regional governments above them. Now, in the documents that these type of goals are presented, there is always something like this. There is some sort of catalog of energy strategies for buildings. This is the case of Boston, in which there is everything proposed from energy efficiency lighting all the way up to storage and district system. And although we can agree that all these things can reduce energy consumption in the built environment, we also know that we cannot apply all these strategies kind of as a blanket to the built environment, right? That we need to be able to prioritize. And policymakers to do that need to understand where is energy consumed and why, and how would that change if these things are applied with a certain level of detail. Unfortunately, that information doesn't exist. And there is a gap between those aggregate goals and then the specific strategies and the urban planners or energy planners that are trying to write policy to, uh, to apply them. So what we've tried to do in the past, and we've been working for a while, is developing thermal simulation tools that work at an urban scale, in which we're able to take geometry information about buildings that cities currently have, reference building information that usually comes from the Department of Energy, and then put them together, generate 3D models, microclimate information, shading context, and estimate energy demands for heating and cooling at a large scale. And we've do, uh, done that around here in the past. Two years ago, we worked with the Boston, then the Boston Redevelopment Authority, developing a map for the city and a model of plus 80,000 buildings so they could estimate how the profiles of energy consumption would look like and use these type of maps by district to estimate what were, were good locations for microgrids. And we've been doing this work uh, with a number of cities now. We always partner with the city and their policymakers and analyze some sort of neighborhood district, trying to help them visualize and understand what could be the potential effects of energy policies in buildings. And a question that we try to answer in this process all the time or to address is that of how accurate these models get, right? Because that's kind of the whole point. We can be as great in our models as we want. If they don't really represent what's happening, then they're not necessarily that useful. And one of the key things that we found out is that using the reference typical buildings we're used to work with in terms of residential built in the 50s or something like that is not enough. And I'm showing you there histograms of energy use as a distribution in white the real distribution and in gray the simulated distribution of kind of the best model that you can do with the current state of the art. So if we don't do something else, the model fails to capture the large diversity of energy loads that we can find in something as simple as a residential district. And why is that? Well, because there are all these things happening in buildings that have to do directly with occupant behavior and that we have zero information about. So one of the things that we focus our research on is how to solve this so these models become useful. And we've been relatively successful in that if we have a sample of metered buildings from a large population of the same type, we can, through these thermal models as well as through a series of statistical procedures, to generate enough types of occupants in this example, 625, that when applied to the model allows us to get almost perfectly to the real distribution of energy loads. And we've tried this in Cambridge with monthly energy data, and we are now working at the hourly scale. And this type of tools that are theoretical in nature, we've already got to test them in a, a specific application, and we've figured out that they can become effectively useful for policymakers. And this is a case study in Kuwait, analyzing a district last year in which we helped the Ministry of Energy understand what could be the impact of different energy retrofit policy scenarios um, in terms of the savings in energy and in cost under different pricing uh, situations. They were considering the option of a tiered pricing system, and we were able to characterize not only how much potentially could be saved, even with the uncertainty in occupant behavior, but also what are the risks and what, how likely it is this thing not necessarily to work. 
So we think this can become a very useful tool for policymakers, and we've identified that there are three main barriers that we need with cities and utilities to address if we want this type of tools to become available for those policymakers. We need better access to metered energy data, a better documentation of the built environment, which is currently embarrassingly bad throughout the board, and better collaborations between cities and utilities, because only the utilities have the data and only the cities have, in general, the main motivations. And with that, I'm done. So thank you very much, and if you want to know more, talk to me later. Thanks.